in the introduction. All right. Hey, everybody. We are uh, doing an Andrew Womack study. It's called The Believer's Authority, uh, What You Did Not Learn in Church. And uh, anyway, we were on Lesson 6. If you missed Lessons 1 through 5, uh, please catch the YouTube. Uh, right now, we're going to go uh, kind of a brief review on lessons one through five uh, from the people in the class uh, right here on what they have gleaned, and then we will dive into lesson six. So uh, would somebody like to open us in prayer, please? I'll, um, I'll, I'll do it, Jeff. Oh, hey, BC Page, good to see you. Awesome. Come on, girl. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Abba, for this glorious day that we come together as one body to not only read and understand your word, but also believe that we can do mighty works in the name of our beloved Jesus Christ. I thank you for this ministry and its fruits. May it continue to spur growth within us. And as we grow like sturdy trees, may it continue to touch our hearts that want to sow seeds of prayer and financial support over it. I thank you for each heart and mind that is willing to accept each day that you have already given us everything pertaining to life and God, the godliness through you and your son, Jesus Christ. I ask you that you deposit in us the knowledge that can make us all understand that we are in a commission with you yes. and that committed to you, we can attain a greater understanding of healing, of authority, a greater understanding of how to live you know, a life full of victory over the enemy. Uh, I bind we... all spirits that come to cause disruption of all learning and hearing and bind all evil spirits of confusion tonight. With all authority, I have yeah. been given the name of Jesus. I crush them and cast them out to Siberia. Yeah. That's right. And with thanksgiving, praise, and, and glorious honor in our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ's name, I close this prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, sister. Wow. Ali, I guess we can all go now. <laughs> wow. Oh, man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, lessons one through five. Can somebody give me a rundown on, on what they learned? I'm just going to go through. I'm going to back up here. And we're going to look at the table of contents and maybe it will jar your memory because, you know, it's in the repetition of the word that it writes it down on the tablets of our heart. Right. Yeah. You know, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. God. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you know, and sadly, you know, unbelief comes the same way. You know, we are inundated by the world on all kinds of, uh, you know, and it, it, it's a lot of it's well-meaning. Uh, but it's man's way, and it's not things that are given to us uh, through the scripture. And oftentimes people will tell me, oh, well, they believe this or they believe that. And I will be like, show me in the word where that's at. You know, just show me what show, show me where you're at. And the thing is, uh, often we are told things by well-meaning people. And it and it's it's not scripture. It's not the truth. You know, we all know that if we continue the word, we shall know the truth. We shall be his disciples, and we shall know the truth. And the sh truth shall do what? Set you free. Set us free. Set us free. Set us free. Set us free, free from the lies. Set us free from the bondage. Uh, but what we're looking at, you know, lesson one, and I'm almost there. I'm scrolling. Uh, lesson one was. We're in a spiritual battle. And lesson two was that Satan's looking who he made an hour. And then we looked at Satan's inroads and no wicked thing. And then we looked at last lesson on unconditional authority. And, you know, we, we wanted to encapsulate all this. Uh, and we started from lesson one uh, on that, you know, unless we understand the love of God for us, you know, a lot of this is, is, is little Nolan, you know, it, it just doesn't have quite the impact. Not that it's null, that was the wrong word, but the the thing is understanding that God loves us and that he's empowered us. He didn't equip us uh, to be uh, survivors. He equipped us to win. And it's, you know, Christ in us is the is, is the hope of glory, you know, that, that with Christ in us, 
the mystery of the gospel. You know, what else could we possibly need to win? Except to know that we can, to know that he's empowered us. And you know, we looked at Romans 5, 17, you know, that it says that those that receive the abundance of grace, the abundance, there's no shortage of grace, that those that receive the abundance of grace, and the gift of great righteousness shall reign in the one, Christ Jesus. And class, why do we want to reign in life this way? So the devil don't. Yep. So the devil don't. Because when we're reigning in life through Christ Jesus, the devil and his works don't. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So who would like to give me a rundown on Glenn Farm? Anybody? Yeah. Which lesson did you say? Oh, well, lessons one through five. You just take your pick there. I'll do well, the first kinda... couple. <laughs> All right, let, let's roll. There's Aggie coming in from Uganda. Hot dog. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Okay. Um, let's just... Lesson one, focus on the love of God and God's, God's love for us all. Each um, is greater is he um, for us all, each one. Greater is he in me than he that is in the world. Mm. Lesson one review is the spiritual battle against demonic powers. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Our mm. battles are not against people or flesh and blood. People are used to get uh, to us when someone is possessed or oppressed or simply depressed. Um, mm. We shouldn't let the devil bait us out of our peace, which is his intention. Wow. We should put on the armor of God and resist the devil. Submit to God by doing the work. Lesson two, whom he may devour. When you yield yourself to sin, you're serving Satan, who's the author of sin. When you yield yourself to obedience, you serve God, who is the author of that righteousness. In the spiritual battle, your actions are important. Set a watch before your mouth. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Mm. So you should choose whom, you'll, choose whom you'll serve. In lesson three, Satan's inroads. Satan has access to you when you're in strife. Confusion and every evil work are found when in where envy and strife is. The Lord is the God of peace who will destroy Satan under his feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The fruit of the Spirit. Set no wicked thing before your eyes. Wow. And then Great. I don't have notes on four, lesson four and five. Great job. Well, I'll pick up lesson four, Mr. Jeffrey. Thank All you. Right. Hey, you can barely hear you, Darren. Man, okay. Great job. Great, great can job you, on that. Can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you a little better. Can y'all hear him? Mm -hmm. All right. Come on, Darren. Okay. In reference to lesson four, I guess there are times when we be speaking for negative thoughts and when we speak for negative thoughts, it gives the enemy a chance to just come in and devour our thoughts and control our thoughts and have other people, you know, family members, co-workers, friends, you know, they can come to you with negative thoughts. So in reference to that, uh, we don't want to be empowered by our negative thoughts. Mm. Good point. So you you wouldn't know what that's talking about, would you know? Negative thoughts? <laughs> Yes, uh, speaking, you know, like you said, the power is in the, in the time of speaking, you know, different things in reference to anything that's negative. I'm speaking against uh, just saying, it's what the young lady was just saying earlier, saying that she was healed when they were saying and talking in the prayer, you know, that she was healed from her uh, issues with her stomach and everything. You know, she could be saying that direct opposite. Of you know, she could be saying that. Mm -hmm. She's still having these issues and all of that. And if she's speaking that, that's what she's going to have. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good job. Good job. So so uh, it's important what we say. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, sir. Very important what we say. 
care of them for. And that's okay. something that I learned from being with this group. You know, I'm just learning daily, you know, going back, viewing uh, different lessons that I wasn't a part of the first two. So when she just gave her synopsis of one, two, and three, it made me realize of what I've been doing. And then it's turned around 24. You know, I'm not doing that. And I think you check on me during the week how I'm doing. What did I tell you today? <laughs> I told you something mm -hmm. totally different. You, you, what I was saying. Yes, recently. sir. D different word. Yes, sir. A, di a, di a different word you had from uh, Darren Darren's past. Yes, sir. No, we, Re really we, good, Darren. That's good, and uh, and that's absolutely right. Because a lot of us go along, and we go fifty years, and we've been doing things the same way. Yeah, we've been so, blind. You know, we've been blind by the truth from the traditional teachings in church. You know, we've been corrupting ourselves. You know, we got to have. What did you just say? We've been corrupting <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> and corrupting ourselves. Yeah, you know, it goes back to when you know what we've looked at. Uh, even in the last lesson, you know, or the the last class we had with God wants you well that. You know, uh, Balak wanted Balaam to curse the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And and Balaam said, I can't. They're already a blessed people. And the thing is, the only way for the Israelis or the Hebrews to be cursed was for them to bless, uh, for them to curse themselves through unbelief. Yes. Well, guess what? We're a blessed people. Jesus has redeemed us from the curse. Yet we listen to things that aren't work and we tend to curse ourselves often. But we're learning. Hallelujah. The good news is it's not God, that God is with us, in us, and for us. And and we can learn. And the thing is, you know, to be, you know, Romans 12, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I can change me. Yes. Hallelujah. Right? Sure. It's 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 not God's fault. And man, that is a wonderful thing. And so hallelujah. We traditionally taught that it's God's fault. You know, we think we it's an issue with God. Yep. And it's never been that. It's been us all along in the way we've been taught and what we've been learning. So, you know. Wow. That's that's really good there. And I hope you're writing that down, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's good. I mean, once we get to that point, change happens. You know, because once we realize that he's already put the Calvary within us, we fight differently. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, all right. Anybody else? Great job. Great job, guys. Anybody else on lessons one through five have something they want to add? Um, Jeffrey, I'd like to uh, back up Mr. Darren. Um, yes, and, 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 back, and backing up what he was saying, um, I totally agree with that. And Andrew was also saying in one of his videos a long time ago, where yes, we have to watch our speak, but we also have to watch the speak of others that speak onto us or you know, onto you know, our children or whatever it is mm, that, that we are associated with. And, we have to counter, you know, attack that speak and immediately do it. You know, don't, don't wait that we, it's it, because, you know, the, you're not going to wait 10 minutes, you know, to battle back. You, you, when you're in a battle, you, you immediately strike. So whenever, yes. um, you know, it, it gets spoken over you, you immediately counter it and say, you know, that no, you know the the negativity gets stricken and and you speak against it and and speak life and speak you know uh positivity and immediately counterattack it so yeah. great point Paige. good job yes yeah, that's, that's exactly right because yeah, we have stuff all the time you know we'll have uh i don't know how many of you guys are over 50 but you know, you'll have people say, oh, yeah, your body starts falling apart once you hit this and all that. And I said, no, no, that may apply to you, but that's not for me. You know, that 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 does not apply to me. You know, or flu season coming through. You know, if, if that's what you want, doesn't apply to me. I don't care if a th thousand fall at my one side and 10,000 at my right hand. It shall not come nigh to me. 
Amen. 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 It's where we speak. That's that's a great job. Hallelujah. Really, really good. Uh, anybody else have anything to add on lessons one through five? I do, Jeff. All right. Hey, Katie. Hey. <laughs> I've Let's been out in the wind. This isn't a new do. I've just been outside. It's windy. Yeah, I wish I could have <laughs> that happen with my hair. So. <laughs> yeah, where'd it go? It's supposed to blow off. Easy to blow away. <laughs> you know, we're talking about negative words. And just this weekend, I was with my brother and I and I speak negative things about him, you know, just oh. angry with him. So, you know, I think about, well, how do how do I correct that? I have to. Well, of course, I recognize it right away now, but then I recognize it and I ask God to forgive me. And then I speak positive things about my brother. Like, to is that what you do? Like you like in the gate what you said and then cover it with a blessing about somebody you just said something bad about that's kind of uh, that's it that's no new. that's a great question uh you know uh breaking the habit you know is often ha hard to do and being with somebody you've been around your whole life you've seen a pattern of things that have happened with that person and and you're really not uh e expecting a change and so you know it's wise to be cautious mm -hmm. you know with what you see coming down coming down the pike mm -hmm. uh, but you know i would still hold back a little bit on what you actually say you know if you think it well that's that's one thing you know what i'm saying but if you're yeah. actually putting it out there uh you know uh, it's hard often and, and and i can't say i'm a whole lot uh uh different because i i know people that have uh you give them a millimeter and they get they they take they run with 10 miles you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying uh like that and to be cautious and for you to anticipate what's what's headed down the pike uh more than likely from a track record uh i understand you know i understand that does some, anybody have anything a little more in depth on, on on that i mean it's i know when you're dealing with people that you've uh, aren't so close sometimes it's a lot easier uh uh because you've been burned so many times you know on the on the other end um anybody have anything on that i've got something to add to that so if we're not um the enemy's going to traffic in our words so yeah you can think things but if you can flip it to a neg to the negative to a positive then that's going to build up faith in us to believe for them to get mm -hmm. so, delivered from being late say if you're saying well he's always lazy and you're thinking that but then you say lord you are delivering him from being lazy <laughs> lord you're yeah. delivering it and that's going to build up not just build up the faith but that's going to send god's power out to change what's <laughs> negative right right that's good or, or I probably got Kate's different. fashion is. Go ahead there, Miguel. I've, I've noticed that also, um, Katie, is that whenever um, I've gone through that too, is I'll tend to um, go my day as being grateful um, with something that, you know, involves God. Um, just, you know, better my relationship like that. And it's kind of like you're bathing yourself in the love of God every day. And so mm. you rejoice in that. And so it kind of gives you that that different mindset and attitude and, and just overall in your day, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of just thanking him every like every moment of the day. Um, and that's improving your relationship. And since he's there with you and you're recognizing it and you know that he's there, you just tend to find yourself leaning towards being positive and loving towards everybody who's around you, you know. And so that's what I, I would also recommend. Thank you, Miguel. You're absolutely right, because I wasn't wow. in that frame of mind. Thank you, buddy. That's really yeah. good. I'm just going to yeah. let Miguel take over the class now, and I'm going to leave. Yeah. Let's <laughs> go, <Miguel. laughs> yeah. Wow. Very good, good, young man. Yeah. Very, yeah. very good. Hallelujah. That's, that, that's, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, that's what... Uh, that's what I've uh, I've been learning from, I think, Romans. You know, Andrew Womack's... Uh, think he's going all Romans and it's just realizing that you know God loves you so much and the moment that you bathe yourself in just that thought and um, improve your relationship with him pretty much everything else is you know it starts loosening and you just become you know Christ in you 
And Hallelujah. So, and it does, right? I mean, even yeah. with, with those situations, I mean, I'm working through some of that stuff now, and I'm not stressed at all. I mean, I got people throwing daggers at me left and right, and it's just like, you know, here's, here's where we're at. It, you know, it's no big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and we're rolling forward, and I just like, Lord, thank you for this day. You know, and 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 move forward, and but you know, I'm maybe I haven't moved as far along as you have on that. To our, you know, I don't know what they're going to do exactly, but I know I'll be in peace, whatever they do. You know, I'm I'm good, and so that's a great word, brother. Week, brother, you was at peace last week. You remember what you said last week? Uh, well, I. What did I say last week, Darren? <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> you were saying, thing. I don't know. No, no. You were saying how regardless of what, that you was going to be at peace the whole entire class. And you came to this class tonight the same way. You just seemed like you're still happy regardless of oh, yes, sir. thorns and oh, thistles or whatever been through your way. You've been happy from last week. I can see that same glow, that same gleam in you from last week. So Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's, it's all where our mind dwells, right? Amen. Yeah. You know, Psalm 91. You know, have, have y'all memorized that one yet? Most of it. Working on it. Can I call on Never somebody? I've memorized it, but I read it every night. Can, can I call on somebody to give it? No, I'm just teasing. I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> tonight. The whole class but, yeah, is swiping quick. Mind? Everybody's leaving. You know, we're down to two. <laughs> also, yeah, one more thing I want to add. Yes. Uh, so, on chapter five, you know, the Lord's given us the authority um, to go forth and to speak yes. His word and to heal. Just like our email. To, but we can't have the complacency. You know, the complacency is the thief of the activity. The to bring forth God's miracles. And mm. I know I've gotten in a place to where I just be like, Oh yeah, they look like they need prayer, but Oh, well, I'm busy or I'm, you know, got my own agenda. And, and we all God. fall and, under that. Yeah. So we have yeah, to start I'd love to looking help you when for, I'm too, I'm, I'm too busy <laughs> headed to church. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's good Samaritan. But uh, yeah, so we have to be looking for and expecting God to use us, not just, I'm trying, you know, live and let live and have our own little, not be worrying about other people because we cross paths with people every day and we may not get another opportunity to speak life or to mm. speak a blessing or to give or pray for them. Mm. That's right, Gail. That's exactly right. You know, to be to be ready in season and out is what it would say in Second Timothy uh, four, right? You know, yes, preach God. the word. Be ready in season and out. Hallelujah. Well, we are about ready to get ready for class because we got to roll for just for time's sake. Uh, is anybody else less than one through five? Anything? Anybody? Well, you know where we're going to start, right, Miguel? <laughs> Can you start us with lesson six, sir? Yeah, I got you. All right, brother man. God of this world, lesson six. <clears throat> the Lord made Adam and Eve the God of the gods of this world. Psalm eighty two six says, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. In context, this was good. This was God creating man and saying to him, You are gods. This isn't gods in the sense of divinity, but gods in the sense of rulership. We were given dominion, power, and authority over the earth. Since it was ours to rule and reign, we were gods over this earth. <clears throat> Psalm 115, 16 says, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. God literally gave the earth to mankind. The, gr- the creator gave us the power and authority to rule over this earth as if we were the creator. We weren't the creator, but that's how much dominion he gave us. Mm. Wow. I will. That's Go ahead. You know, it's just, yes, go ahead. When Lucifer, still the sinless, perfect angel of God in the garden sent to minister to Adam and Eve, saw the unconditional authority over the earth that God had given to man, he recognized an opportunity. Isaiah 14 reveals his thought process. O Lucifer, son of the morning, 
thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like, I will be like the most high. Wow. Uh, Lucifer, that, re read that again. We, the last sentence. He will be like uh, who? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He was looking to be like the most high. Man. Okay, continue. Thank you. Good job. Mm -hmm. Lucifer envied God. He wasn't content with being the top angel. He was jealous and wanted God's position, but he couldn't just take the place, that place with the delegated power he had been created with. If he would have rebelled, that power would have instantly been taken away and he would have been destroyed. However, he saw an opportunity with man because God had given Adam and Eve something that he'd never given to the angels, an unconditional, no reservations or qualifications, no strings attached authority over the earth. Lucifer saw that if he could get Adam and Eve to yield to him and rebel against God, then he could become the new God of this world. Second Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Even though the Bible hadn't been written down yet, <clears throat> Lucifer knew that the word of God was settled was settled from the beginning in Psalm 119 89 and that the Lord never changes Malachi 3 6 mm -hmm. therefore his creation has always operated under his unchangeable spiritual laws which include uh, in Romans 6 16 know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sins unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Mm. Understanding how God's kingdom works, Lucifer knew that if he could trick Adam and Eve into yielding to and obeying him, then he could become their master. Then he could take the power and authority that had begun to that had been given to mankind and use it to begin thwarting the kingdom of God and start receiving this praise, adoration, adoration, and glory that he felt he desired. That's how it happened. Mm. Good job. Good job, Miguel. Awesome. You know, on this, uh, you know, re reading the verse there, Miguel, will you read Romans 6, 16 again? Yes, sir. Um, know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey whether sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Mm. You're a servant to who you obey. I mean, that's that's really powerful. That's out of Romans right there, you know, written to believers. Uh, you know, the devil has to know his end, right? Mm -hmm. and he, he knows the Bible better than most Christians do. You know, he knows his end, but uh i would just say you know in this life and i'm just i'm not this is not a condemnation statement this is not a you know anything like that but even within myself uh how often do i like quick satisfaction mm. and don't care about the end result mm. anybody else else or that just me you know what i'm saying yeah yeah right here jeffrey and i'm and i'm younger than you are so it is always going to be a spiritual power <laughs> i mean spiritual war what do you mean you're younger than me what are you saying <laughs> you're not old yet you're not old at all jeffrey you're still young yourself <laughs> he's saying he's but, younger than you <laughs> but yeah he is i'm just i'm just kidding with him uh but the but yeah we, uh, all of you know uh, man, that is the flesh looking for that younger, I mean, not younger, that, that instant satisfaction right there. You know, the devil knows it's going to, it's going to cost him big in the long run, but to have that, uh, immediate satisfaction to, to, to tamper down whatever he's looking to tamper down, you know? And so just, just for him to step out like that. Let's, let's, let's read on. Okay, I'll you know, read. Taken hostage. Who's this? Darren. Darren, you're a little muffled, though, sir. I need I need it to be louder for the recording. Let me take this on. 
Let me I need to be louder for the recording. So when some people re listen, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I'm glad you decided to show up. Thank you. No, I took the earplugs <laughs> off. Okay. Take it hostage. When someone, when someone robs a bank, they often take a hostage. A bank usually has all kinds of powerful security locks, alarms, vaults, cameras, and armed guards. One person with a gun isn't really sufficient to go in and overpower all the security. However, mm. if the thief grabs a hostage and puts a gun to their head, they know their demands will be met. The people who run the banks aren't willing to see a hostage killed just to protect some money. Therefore, one person with a gun and six bullets can challenge the far greater force of multiple guards with automatic weapons and several cartridges can technically the thief shouldn't be able to overpower the security, but with a hostage, they are able to get away with the robbery. Mm. Satan knew he couldn't overpower God in a direct confrontation. However, he saw how God gave Adam and Eve unconditional authority. If they, of their own free will, will yield to him, they wouldn't transfer their authority over him as well. Mm. Say it again, Darren Willis. Yes, sir. Satan knew he couldn't overpower God in a direct confrontation. However, he saw how God gave Adam and Eve unconditional authority. If they, of their own free will, yielded to him, they would transfer that authority over him as well. Over to him as well. So it was unconditional over to authority. Him as well. yeah, their, their authority that God gave them, Satan knew that they would transfer that authority over to him as well. Yeah. Over to him as well. And it was unconditional to, to go have dominion, subdue, and multiply. And, you know, yeah. we looked in Luke 4 last week, you know, on that, that when Satan was tempting Jesus, you know, yeah. he says, you know, all this power I have and I can give it to who I, you know, it's been given to me and, and I can give it to who I will. Well, who gave it to him? Adam. Adam and Eve. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. Good job. Continue, sir. Please. As creator and owner, God could have come down and wiped out the world. He could have destroyed Adam and Eve, the devil and all of the angels that rebel. As creator, he had the right to do that and start over. However, to intervene in the affairs of this world like that would have violated his word. Mm -hmm. He had given dominion over this earth to Adam and Eve. He had given the power of authority to rule over this world to physical human beings. If God would have intervened, he would have violated his word. And the entire universe would have self-destructed because it's held together by the integrity of his word. Ali, thank you. Yes, sir. Hebrews 1, 3, that's right. So just to put this on a simpler matter, if, if I were to give, give something to you, I'm going to just go and probably specify that. Say if I give uh, Darren a uh something that uh let's just say i give him a, a little tonka everybody remembers these tonka dump trucks you know that kind of thing that i had since i was a kid and it was really precious to me and i had it and my grandpa gave it to me and you know darren's my good friend i've known him for years and i wanted him to have it and you know and i gave it to him as a gift okay it was a gift I had they, you know, he didn't do anything to earn it, you know, anything like it. Adam and Eve didn't do anything to, to earn what, what the Lord had given them. Uh, but I, I gave it uh, to him, you know, as a as a precious gift. And and then, uh, for example, uh, he he thought it would be fun to uh, he, he 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 received the gift as Adam and Eve received the gift. And then he went and and. Uh, uh, it beat it up with a sledgehammer <laughs> and, and tore it up. And, and then he gave it to a group of thugs, you know, uh, do I go and take that gift back from Darren or did I give him a gift? 
You gave him a gift. I gave him a gift. Okay. Proceed, sir. Thank you. For God to maintain his integrity and stand by what he had previously said, you have dominion. He had to give Adam and Eve their freedom. If they wanted to yield their authority and power over earth to Satan, then technically it was their right to do so. God would have been unjust to come down here, destroy Satan, say, Adam and Eve, don't do this again, and then redeem them. He couldn't do that and still be faithful to the word. He had spoken over them. They had a choice. Mm. Mm. So you see the analogy? Yes. With that, you know, uh, to go take it back or whatever, he, he couldn't do that. All right, good job. Proceed, sir. Lucifer saw how much God loved them. God met with them every day in the cool of the evening. After creating the whole universe, billions and billions of galaxies, stars, and planets, God was bound to have other things to do, yet he spent time with Adam and Eve every single day. Mm -hmm. So Satan gambled that God wouldn't come down and wipe out this creation he made. Mm. Wow. Good job. Good job. All right, let's read forward. Lord Joyce. Lower on. Thought she was. Taking a nap. Can you Ooh, hear me now? Potter. I can there hear she you is. Now. All right. <laughs> no. Please read. Okay, I had to Thank take you. my earphones off. <laughs> All right, Darren did too. Look at there. What is it? I know. Earphones? It works much better. It's much clearer. Okay. Um, Satan needs submission. Satan was using Adam and Eve as hostages to hide behind, saying, God, they gave me this authority. It was their choice. I didn't force them. Satan didn't come with a mammoth and put his foot on Eve's head. He didn't come and mm -hmm. overpower them. The devil came with deception, and they willingly yielded to him. This is where his transgression took place, in the Garden of Eden. He used them like a hostage, saying, God, if you want to do anything to me, you'll have to destroy Adam and Eve, too. This, They did this of their own free will. Mm. Due to God's great mm -hmm. love for mankind, Satan was allowed to become God of this world. Instead of wiping us out and starting this whole thing over, God allowed what we did to stand. We are the ones who made Satan. We are the ones who enabled Lucifer to leave his position in heaven, come into a fallen state, and rule the earth as Satan, the god of this world. Wow. We were originally intended to be gods, absolute rulers over this world, but mankind gave their dominion, authority, and power to Lucifer. So God created Lucifer, but Adam and Eve made Satan. They didn't create Satan in the sense that God had already created Lucifer as an angelic being. However, Adam and Eve made Satan who he was by giving him their power and authority. Most people believe that Satan is using a superior power and authority to oppress mankind. They see him as this huge, powerful being who is so much superior to any of us this is reflected in television shows and horror movies satan and his demons are portrayed as these strong powerful beings most people see the devil as superior being as a superior being in power and authority however lucifer lost his divinely delegated god-given power the very instant he transgressed and became satan the devil is not using a superior power and authority against us. He's actually using the same power and authority that God gave mankind to rule and reign with over this earth. It's our own power and authority that he uses against us. On his own, Satan is powerless. He depends completely on physical human being, beings yielding to and empowering him. 
Even under the old covenant, Satan didn't have the power to control and dominate people. He has to use our own power and authority against us. Mm. It's only as we submit to him that Satan is able to do anything. Great job. Great job, Lord Jewish. Uh, you know, looking at that, you know, that well, this is a blanket question. Uh, not, but you know the answer. So he did all this, and then Jesus came and redeemed us from all this. So with this, with him trying to do this, what is the antidote? Tommy? The antidote is knowing the truth. Knowing the truth? No, no, knowing right. who is in us, Christ in us. That's what I was looking for. Christ Amen. in us. Amen. Yeah, let me keep Hallelujah. swinging. I'll hit it one and you know. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you if you want to see a lot of cats this weekend because it's kind of quiet tonight. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> I, I really wanted to weigh in on that uh, whole uh, Mississippi accent you were making fun of earlier. You know, us us Texas folks got to stick together. What? Uh, <laughs> when he couldn't understand Flora, I thought, yeah, I have trouble too. Uh, Flora. <laughs> it's florida 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 yeah it's close enough yeah uh way wow. to go Mr. awesome all so right. all hey, of this Jeff, we're going over yes sir hey uh i'd like to also submit that uh, you know back when we were doing the uh god wants you well we went over the spiritual laws um mm. you know the the law of faith um but I want you to also recognize that Jesus submitted to those laws and worked within those laws before his resurrection, as well as we do now in uh, John 14 30. This is Jesus red letters says, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and has nothing in me, but, but that the world may know that I love the father and as the father gave me commandment. So I do. But even then, Jesus knew that he had to abide within those laws of the, sp of the spoken truth as well. You know, he was going to go through the roughest time of, of his life. He, he was going to um, obtain that finished work that he had come here to do so that we might have uh, no God. And yet he knew that during this time, he had to keep quiet because he was going to be tempted to speak his anger and wrath. And uh, even though it was, you know, his will and his desire to go to that cross for us right here, it even says that he had to watch his tongue. Mm. Great, great point. You know, I ponder that verse a lot lately myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, because it make it does make a difference when you know you're being antagonized by, mm -hmm. you know, great, great word. What what verse was that? John fourteen thirty. John fourteen thirty. Fourteen thirty. One awesome. my son, in, the one my son in law, and I talk about a lot when we're talking to our wives. Oh, Sometimes it's that's best good. To keep your mouth shut, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know Jimmy's dad has halitosis. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about. Look behind <laughs> you, man. Does everybody else see that behind him? <laughs> Yes. Jimmy's dad ha has halitosis. Those, <laughs> those are two boys fighting. <laughs> I've never seen that. Oh, gracious. <laughs> Great word. Great I'm, word. I'm going to I'm have to move right. over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, continue I've been reading, please. Much worse. Thank you. <laughs> Are we done with that one? We're done with that one. Okay. All right. Uh, great job, Lord Joyce. Uh, a demon needs a body. Anybody have anything on that so far? We're good on time. If anybody has anything. Yeah, I do. You got, oh, we man, got time. Come on in. We do? You know what? Yeah. I, I know Satan can't possess us unless we let him. But he, you yeah, know. Unless he we let him. He has power over the natural, the natural world. Like think about the storm when Jesus was crossing over 
And, you know, he can manipulate the physical world, don't you think? And then, of course, maybe I shouldn't go back here, but to Job, you know, all the things that happened to Job, Satan had to have permission. But that was the Old Testament. So I don't think that really counts anymore. You know what I mean? For being being able to be beat up just for the, the sporting event of it, you know? So I think yeah. that that kind of doesn't count now that, that Jesus is victorious over all evil, right? Well, it does and it doesn't because the 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 question we often hear is uh why did god allow this yeah as a believer yeah. it's because you allowed it yeah i understand that but job you know so job didn't have choice i know <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying but you do yeah yeah and because it's christ in you and so, yeah, great, great, great interjection there. And then even with the storm, you know, Jesus going over and calming the storm. He wasn't rebuking himself. When he told it to be quiet and be still, you know, and so uh, absolutely. But with the authority, kind of like we're talking, you know, of course, the name of the class is the believer's authority. You know, oftentimes, which, Kate, I know you can relate to, you know, we've been taught, uh, I mean, the church is a submission machine. Do what you're told. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, but we're learning now that things that we have submitted to weren't necessarily God. Mm -hmm. Right? Great, it was man-made. What you got, Annie? Man made. Man made. made. The man decided this is the rule and go by it. You know, traditions mm -hmm. of men. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly right. Good job, guys. Good job. Way to step out there. All right. Who would like to read A Demon Needs a Body? All right. Don't jump out there and, and then continue on to. Uh, you start that one that's short, so continue on with the right to use power. Who would like to read that? I'll do it, Jeff. All right, Kate, please do. Thanks. Okay. A demon needs a body. The devil and his demons, as spirit beings, have no power or authority on this earth apart from physical human beings yielding it to them. Consider the example of Jesus casting out the demons in Luke 8. When the Lord commanded the unclean spirit out of a man, the demons identified themselves as legion because there were many, Luke 8.30. They begged Jesus, don't cast us out into the deep, but send us out, send us into that nearby herd of swine. When the demons entered those 2,000 pigs, they immediately took off running, jumped off a steep cliff, and drowned themselves in a lake. Demons are looking for a physical body, a willing vessel. They need somebody who will submit to them. The power that the devil or any other demon, the power that the devil or any other demon uses against us is our own. Satan has zero angelic spiritual power. All his authority comes from man. The only reason Satan exists and functions is because people cooperate with and empower him. That's why he always seeks to inhabit a body. Even a pig has more authority on earth than a demon. An ant, a fly, or a snail has more power on this earth than Satan because they have physical bodies. He is absolutely powerless to do anything unless he can get a physical body to cooperate with him. The right to use power. God is the authority of all power and authority. God is the author of all power and authority. When he created mankind, he gave Adam and Eve dominion over the earth. Genesis 1, 26-28. God gave us, gave us, physical human beings, power and authority to rule this world. Authority is simply the right to use power. God gave that right to use power to Adam and Eve. Basically, God said, here's my power. Now I give you the right to use my power. Everything I have created will respond to you. God is spirit, John 4, 24. Satan is spirit too, Ephesians 2, 2. He doesn't have a physical body. Therefore, Satan can't come and make anyone do anything. 
Mercy must gain their cooperation. Many Christians see Satan as an angelic being with godlike supernatural power and authority over man. They see him coming and empowering them, when the truth is that the devil can't force them to do anything. He lost his power when he rebelled at God. The only power and authority Satan is functioning under now is human power and authority. It takes your cooperation for the devil to do anything in your life. That's why he seeks whom he may devour. Satan doesn't have the authority and power to devour you unless you quit obeying God and yield yourself to sin. Romans 6.16 says that when you yield yourself to sin, you're actually yielding yourself to the author of that sin, which is Satan. Satan can't just destroy you without your cooperation. But when you sin, you are empowering the devil. That's a lot. Great job, Kate. No, great job. And and with that, uh, I've never heard you know, of this before in my life. What's that, dude? What are you Me saying? Either. I've never, <laughs> ever heard of this. I mean, I've been reading it back and forwards since she started reading. I went back to what I some of the stuff I read, but I've never, ever in my life heard of this ever, ever. What, what, which part? The entire part she just read. Well, the entire part, part you just give, read. Give, give me something specific. Come on, help me well, out. Well, just just saying uh, that that uh, that you know, like she was saying, people think Satan has power over us, but we give Satan the power. He's powerless. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that in my life. None of this mm -hmm. ever. And I feel I'm very humble to read to, to hear her read this and then read it myself. I'm very, it's a very humbling experience. Wow. Man. Mm. Great job. Way, way to receive, brother. That's good. That's good. Because, mm -hmm. you know, looking at this, you know, the, yeah, he, uh, like I say, going through this study and looking at the believer's authority, you know, that's one thing I, I, I've done from day one is we want to uh, magnify more God's love for us and mm -hmm. what he is, what he has given, you know, versus, versus glorifying a big devil you know on things and and the thing is you know you know looking at that yes our actions matter you know what we think matters what we say matters you know that's why it says all through scripture you know even in new testament you know when when they're writing you know don't be in strife don't be this why because you're you're given inroad you know why be in great joy because that's a weapon against the kingdom of darkness. You know, you had, you had Paul, you know, he says, man, I don't care if that, you know, if I, if I'm staying or if I'm going, he says, whatever. He said, either is good for me. And, and that kind of person, you can't, you, you know, the devil was not going to get in his head. Right. 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 And so for us, you know, the thing is through all this, what, what we need to realize I mean, uh, with this is that once again, the mystery of the gospel is help me out. Christ in you. Christ in you. Amen. Christ in you. Mm -hmm. You know, and as we mentioned earlier today, you know, even, you know, what could you possibly need? You know, everybody's looking for anointings and giftings and what I you know, you know, what is my calling and all this kind of so what's going on? Man. You've got Christ in you. You need to think bigger. Right? Yeah. Versus Amen. so many of us have been taught and taught and taught that God has been the limiting factor on our life. Yeah. Anybody? Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This might be a good place to uh, discuss that example of slavery, Jeff. You all right with that? Uh, well, I think I am. You want to, you start. I yeah. can use okay. you if it's not good. No, just, okay. Uh, just kidding with you, brother. Yeah, I, I, I started to share this with uh, Darren a couple weeks ago. And we just hadn't been able to hook up. But imagine, if you will, that you were born 20 years uh, before slavery was ended. So for 20 years, you were raised as a slave. And then when you turn 20, Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation and you become free that day. But your old master won't let you know that. 
he limits your access any way that he can from you to find out the truth. Mm -hmm. So you live another 50 years under the oppression of an old master who has no right to you. But on your 70th birthday, you find out that in fact, you are free. Not only are you free, but you have been free for 50 years. So at that point, you're going to have a couple of different emotions. One is you're going to be highly elated, okay, and, mm. and joyful that you can walk in this newfound freedom. But the mm. other thing that's going to happen is, is you're going to have a resentment and an anger towards that old enemy that kept you captive without any right to you for 50 mm. years because you didn't know the truth. Mm. All you would have had to have known for those 50 years is that you were the truth, which is that you yeah. were free. And that is the example that best correlates in my mind to the situation that we're in. There was a time when he was God of this world, okay, and that he had dominion over, uh, over the things that happened on this world. That has been purchased back. We were made free. So for 2,000 years, we have been free, but if we don't know the truth, we continue to walk the way, the way we've always walked. Amen. So th that's, what, that's word, what's going bro. on now is this, this great truth is setting us free. Now, on your 70th birthday, you know that you have become free, so I'm no longer subject to him, but how long will I have to rethink every one of my daily processes, every one of my daily habits, how long would it take me to start walking like a free person as opposed to what I've always known? But mm. the quicker you reestablish who you are in your citizenship, the quicker you start walking like a free man. Okay, right. I don't know any. I, I don't know anything about slavery. This isn't about slavery. It's about the, the example that that we're free now, and the only thing that limits the degree of which the degree of Jesus that we walk in is the revelation of what that freedom entails for us. And the, the more we can transform our minds to that whole truth, then the more we walk like him every single day and do the wow. things that he said we would do. So uh, that, you, you know, um, I, I don't know that, you know, I, I don't profess to know anything about being a slave, but I know what hell is and I've been there and it's horrible. And uh, when, when you get set free, um, and you realize that you were in that bondage because of your own ignorance, mm -hmm. it'll light a fire yeah. under you to the yeah, point that, you. amen. And not only will it have you looking forward to tomorrow, but every time that old, in, old master comes back and tries to convince you to walk in your old ways, those are those red flares that I talk about all the time. I yes. am never going to be subject to that crap again, ever. Amen. Brother. Okay. Amen. Now, Amen. now, and the only way that he can get me to walk in those old ways is, is with deception. Okay. Ephesians chapter six. Uh, we, we went over that a couple of weeks ago, but the truth sets us free. So we have to know mm. the truth so well and have it established in our heart that when he comes back and tries to convince us to walk in our old ways, we know what the truth is. And what, what allows us to walk and have that settle in our heart is not so much remembering where we came from, but the hope of what he has planned for us tomorrow mm. and today. Yes. yes. So yes, sir. anyway, hope, hope that example helps. It helps well, me every day, I promise. That was a good one. That's Thank really you. great, brother. Amen. That's, that's awesome, Tommy. How many of you guys are glad this is recorded? Yes. We can come yeah. back to it. Amen. Amen. You can come yeah. back. Tommy, that was awesome. That, that yeah. was that was, that was uh, amazing, brother. You see why you God <laughs> put you in my life, Tommy? <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> I think it's the other you, way, right? Yeah, he put you in my life <laughs> to keep me safe from Ivagene. 
No, no. <laughs> let, let, me tell you, let, let me tell you something funny. So I was just about to talk when Tommy started talking. I was going to say about even a pig has more authority on earth than a demon. <laughs> An ant, a fly, or a snail. And just as I got to that point, I nearly screamed at the top of my lungs because this humongous bug flew over me <laughs> and hit me on my arm. <laughs> I didn't know what it uh, was. And I was ooh. like, get back, Satan. <laughs> I thought certain you were gonna call me a pig. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to I had to mute it and get rid of the bug. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But even a pig has more authority on earth. It has than more authority. Amen. And that's the thing is when Amen. when you see the devil as a cockroach. Yes. You know, it, yeah. it may Thank when you, what what does it say? Does anybody have the verse when we finally see him, we'll say, huh? Yeah. Really? That's that's what we yeah. You know, yeah. And, yes. Hey Trish. Hey. So how you um, doing? Good. Pretty good. Um good. But when Tommy was talking about the whole slavery thing, it just took me back to the children of it, you know, the Israelites that were in Egypt and God brought them out of Egypt, mm -hmm. but they were in the desert and they were still think thinking like mm -hmm. slaves. They had been there for so long and they Why, were still thinking years. like slaves. So... Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> wow, that's a great, great thought because they were the same way. You know, when we're in a pattern of thinking for 50 years or whatever, yeah. you know, we and and the thing is, uh, what does it say in Isaiah 44? Uh, that you know, they the deceived man runs with ashes in his hands, you know, he, he doesn't have anything there, and this is going to be a uh, you know, and the thing is, a deceived man. And, and we, we've all been there, okay? The deceived man will fight you to defend the lie. Mm. Because this is going to be real profound, I know. But the deceived man doesn't know that he's being, that he's deceived. He doesn't know that he's be, believing a lie or he wouldn't be deceived. Right. you catch that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why oftentimes you'll find the ultra religious want to jump down your throat because they're full heartedly believing a lie. Awfully quiet out there. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> yeah, if I wanted to add something to that, if you don't mind. Hey, sure. You bet. Hey, yeah, I do talk. Uh, one thing that the word, <laughs> and I can't remember where the scripture is, it's either in Psalms or Romans, but one thing that the word said, or the Bible or the word says that everyone knows that God exists. Everyone yeah. knows it, except they refuse to because they want to live in their own unrighteousness. They mm -hmm. choose to live in their sin. Okay. They choose to be that way. They choose and free will. They, yeah, it's free. Yeah, exactly. They choose to be that way. Because they just want to, they, they don't want to accept it. So, um, and, and in a sense of that, uh, and because of that, they are letting sin have power over them. Mm. So, I wanted to add that. Mm. That's, that, that, that's absolutely right. Yeah, and a lot of it's ignorance, right? We just sometimes just don't know. Right? You already gone? Yes. Sherry? I, I I can come back. I'm here. No, no, you're yeah, yeah but oftentimes <laughs> it's just it's just it's just pure ignorance, you know, on, on our parts. We just don't know. You know, uh absolutely great word. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay, well let's continue on and we're gonna go ahead and write, go through the rest of the lesson right here. We got we got two headings. And who would like to jump on the read? Earth suits. I 
All right, oh, Gino. It. All right, you might be able to finish it, Miguel. If Gino doesn't jump in. We'll give her about <laughs> five seconds. About five <laughs> seconds. That's right. Okay, maybe she's taking. Go ahead, brother. Proceed. She got it. She got it. She unmuted. She unmuted. There you go. Are you are you eating, Gene? What are you doing? (laughs) She's drinking water. Yeah, exactly. I thought Sandria wanted to read because she had did so. Sandria, yes. You can go first. Come on, son. All right. You go first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. However you want to do it. Good job. Okay, I'll I'll save the last title for you, Sandria. Okay. 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 Okay, earth suits. Most people don't see it this way. They understand that according to scripture, Satan was originally created as an angel. Angels have a higher power than what we do, but they don't have the authority or right to exercise that power in the earth. However, most people assume that Satan has a higher power and authority than we have, and they are intimidated by it. They don't realize that he lost all his angelic power when he rebelled. And now his authority is totally tied to us. Since God gave us the authority over this earth and everything going on in it to physical human beings, Satan, who is without a physical body, is absolutely powerless unless we empower him by yielding to and indulging his lust, lies, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, or some other sin. This is why our actions are so important. Your physical body is what gives you authority here on earth. The Apostle Paul doesn't have any power or influence over your today. He's still alive, but he's no longer in a physical body. The only influence he has on anyone today is through the physical writings that he left behind. People can read them and be influenced. However, Paul doesn't leave the authority to function and operate any longer on this earth because he no longer has a physical body. I have a physical body. I have more authority and power on this earth than the Apostle Paul right now because he has lost his earth suit. This earth suit, my physical body, is what empowers me and gives me authority. Hmm. Satan can't do anything without somebody in an earth suit yielding to him. This is why he's constantly vying for your heart, trying to get you to yield to him through anger, fear, hurt pain and depression every time you move away from what god's word says and act in union with what the devil is trying to do you yield authority to him Mm -hmm. every time you quit believing and receiving god's supernatural power and ability and sin instead you empower the enemy satan can only function as he keeps people submitted to himself through lies and deception. It's sad to say, but one of his greatest weapons of deception has been the church. The church is taught that Satan is a superior power. He isn't. He's actually using nothing but human power and human authority that requires our cooperation for him to work. Mm. Ooh. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's a good job there, Gino. Good read. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Sandria, finish us out on the read. All right. My own human authority. Does that mean Satan isn't a factor? No, he is a factor. There are millions of people on the face of the earth who are yielded to the devil today. They are operating in sexual immorality, lies, deception, hurt, fear, hatred, idolatry, and more. Every time we yield to something negative, we empower the devil. So yes, Satan is a factor and he has to be dealt with. But as far as my individual life goes, Satan can't do anything without my consent and cooperation. Understanding that the power and authority Satan uses is human power. The power God has given to me, a physical human being, to rule and reign over this earth has put everything in a brand new light. Now, instead of being intimidated by the enemy, I have boldness toward the devil. I understand that if I were to start doing the wrong things in my actions, saying the wrong things with my words and indulging negative emotions, Satan would take advantage of it. 
He'd come in, eat my lunch, and pop the bag. I'm not ignorant of his devices, but I'm also not afraid of him. I'm not being passive toward him, but I'm actively and intentionally resisting him. I realize that all he all he's doing is coming against me with my own human authority and power. I received a testimony from a woman who had been a Satanist before converting to Christ. Even after being born again, she suffered many problems because she was afraid that Satan was mad at her and was trying to punish her for turning away from him. When she heard this teaching on the believer's authority, it set her free. All her fears left as she realized that the devil couldn't do anything to her without her consent and cooperation. These truths liberated this precious sister and they'll be, and they'll liberate you too. Mm, great job. Great job. That's right. Now, will you read the last two sentences, please? Do, 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 do. All her fears left as she realized that the devil couldn't do anything to her without her consent and cooperation. These truths liberated this precious sister, and they'll liberate you too. Mm. Hallelujah. All fears left. You know, she realized that the devil couldn't do anything to her without her consent and cooperation. And, uh, you know, uh, Tommy, what, what is uh, Second Peter uh, chapter uh, one that we talk about? Uh, he has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm. We are partakers. Woo. Mm. I think I think that's worth reading. Oh, yeah. Let's read it. Yeah. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the true knowledge, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which mm -hmm. have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. You know, hey, Jeff, this, yes, you sir. remember uh, about... I guess it was January. A, a guy called me um, by way of Colorado to Dallas and then to Tyler. And then this guy called me. It, it was crazy. I still haven't met him, but his, his wife had a devil um, and they had uh, gone so far as, as uh, he had mentioned this to uh, someone. And he says, well, I'll just come over and we'll get rid of it. So he, he went over there. And uh, when he tried to cast this thing out, um, she flipped out. And uh, this guy, he just said, hey, sorry about your luck. And he went home and left her there like that. And mm -hmm. uh, so he called me. And I'm thinking, I, I don't understand what the big deal is, you know. And I hadn't had a whole lot of experiences with, with devils. So, you know, I called you. We had multiple conversations about it. Then I went to Nepal. And um, when we got over there and ran into some of these devils that were that were obvious. And, um, man, I tell you, the, the first service that we were in, that we saw these things, uh, you talk about screaming and wailing and carrying on. And it, it just made me... Uh, pretty angry, you know, uh, because, uh, we were a team of 17 people and these two ladies manifested and, uh, 16 people from our team converged on those two ladies. And, uh, those two demons disrupted all of that praise, all of that glory of God. And I was a guest, you know, and, and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's not my, it's not my authority there, but what it did do is it left the entire church to me because all of those sixteen people were were uh, otherwise occupied, and I had a ball. I'm telling you, I had to ball with an entire church. And uh, but the thing that that bothers me about that situation is is that's what what the that's how 
the devil became the devil is he wanted the attention and the adoration that God had. So mm. when they when they manifest like that, and and I'm speaking from experience now, but I, I wasn't then. But I was just like, just tell them to shut up and come out. You know, don't let them have any of of what they're trying to get. And um, so the next service we went to, um, I was able to to minister to to several people in similar situations, and. Um, no experience, no nothing. You know, it's not like I'm a, a, a devil slayer. Uh, but um, the first thing I did is told them to shut up and then to come out. And then they left. And, um, you know, you know I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you from a very limited experience, except that to get back to the story about the, the lady whose uh, husband called me, and um, after praying about this for several months, I, I came to the conclusion that, you know, that the gospel is the answer for every single problem mm. and being set free. So, you know what, if you run into a devil, just tell him to shut up and get out. It's not that big a deal. Okay. It's only a big deal if you let it be a big deal, but mm. But I really think that that is um, probably not get God's best plan because Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if I encounter a day, a, a person on June 1st, I cast the devil out and I say, hey, go enjoy your day. If I don't do something to change the way that person thinks, to understand who they are in Christ, the minute I leave, they're in worse condition than when I found them. Yep. This is an obvious example, but it's the same with healing. It's the same with, with, uh, prosperity. It's the whole, it's, it's, a, we have to become disciples. And so when we get to lay hands on someone and see them healed, uh, you, you better know that you, you have a responsibility to stay close to that person mm, that's because right. it's, th it's their thinking that got them to that point. Okay. It's my thinking. I am the culmination of my thoughts because that's what comes out of my mouth. So if, if I receive a breakthrough today, but I don't become a disciple to the point that my mind is transformed, then I'll be in the same boat within just a very short time. So, um, you know, this, um, this is, um, it's, you can't, okay. So I need to get back to the point that with this lady, it's not going over there with, you know, my holy water and, and, uh, you know, maybe my cross or my Bible or whatever. Uh, the answer is, is the same for everything. Because once someone becomes aware that they are no longer under their authority and that they have submitted to that, then I don't have to cast the devil out. He's going to leave. He, he's not going to stay there. Um now there there are times that uh, that you might have a little pesky sucker hanging around trying to keep knocking on the door, but it's the same gospel as the answer for every problem that we have. It's mm. knowing God. It's knowing Him experientially, tasting and seeing to the point that Paul said, "You know what? You're going to kill me. Hallelujah. You're going to leave me. Hallelujah." That is uh, an experiential. Uh, example of of what it's like to walk in a renewed mind of mm. who he is how much he loves us and um so yeah i i think that that this this is an amazing uh lesson i love it um and i think it kind of adds some nuts and bolts and maybe some logistics but they have to be seen through the lens of Romans 8.32. You know, it's his love 
that allows us to uh, to walk in that freedom. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to hush in just a minute, but I, I really think that it's uh, comical that um, Gene had to uh, read the, the part about the earth suits. Because for about six weeks, we've been talking about dinosaur suits. I think some of y'all may have heard us talking about that. But, um, you know, so here we are in this earth suit. And it is the only thing that has authority on this earth. Okay. Jesus needs to operate in us. That's why we're the hands and the feet. Okay. But not only do we have that God-given authority and dominion over things in this world, but after we are born again, we are given the opportunity in multiple places in Romans, Colossians, we get to put on Christ. Mm. So here we are walking with this human authority that God has given us, uh, you know, 5,000 years ago to walk in dominion over this earth. But in order to do it correctly and in complete victory, he then provides us the opportunity to step in Christ to the point that uh, we have the, the the same authority, but now we get to do it um, walking in Christ. And it's it's the greatest opportunity that that's why the church is what the church is right now is because it's just too good to be true. And, um, you know, when we can, we can offer that hope, you know, it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Us 25 people sitting here telling people how they're wrong doesn't change their thinking. What that does is that creates an argument. But what if we just invite them to walk in the hope of Christ, to walk in the authority of Christ, to have a different life? So uh, I, I love this. It's very uh, logistical and uh, in its in its order. Um, but I think uh, we get to invite people to walk in that love and then do these things. It's, it's not going to be, you know, it's real easy to get mad because I was mad at the church for a very long time. Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> I was very mad at them because I felt like they had betrayed me when, in fact, I've got my own Bible. I could have found these things. Um, so anyway, that's my soapbox for the day. <laughs> <clears throat> Probably not. Well, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Jeffrey, yeah. and then the other thing is, something. Um, can I add something in regards to the devil not having any power, please? Well, mm -hmm. you sure may, Paige. Um, Great job, brother. I think that James 4, 7 covers it perfectly to demonstrate okay. that, that the devil mm -hmm. really has no power. Because when it says, submit therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. If we really look at that, why is he fleeing? If he supposedly is this powerful, you know, uh, being that can do whatever he wants to do with us, why would he flee? You know, a, a person flees when they have no power, when they have no weapon, when they have no, uh, you know, a, a mm. foundation to stand on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. when you so challenge think, exactly so i think that one verse alone is a very powerful um demonstration of the the devil having absolutely no power especially seeing within that same verse that we submitted to god and he had to flee amen, mm -hmm. uh, amen that's right and and the thing is on that verse like I said, the key, the, uh, you know, it says submit to God. That was the first. How do we submit to God? We do the word, mm -hmm. right? Because Satan's eager to steal the word. When you get the word, you mark four. He's eager to steal it. But when you, when that seed takes root and it and it and it grows in you and becomes 30, 60, 90, you know, a <laughs> hundred fold, what have you, you know, that, you know, the, you know, we're submitting to the Lord. And, and the devil flees from you. You know, the exact opposite is, is when we disbelieve the word, you know, when we look at the word and we say, well, yeah, I don't really know if I believe that's accurate or that's true or that kind of, 
then we actually submit to the devil because we believe the lie by default. Amen. And so, uh, knowing as Tommy said earlier, knowing the truth, once we know the truth, the truth is the answer for everything Amen. right there. Uh, hey, nothing will stick to you uh, uh, when, when you're walking in truth. If I said that right, but great work, Paige. Absolutely, I agree. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you, thank you. Somebody else had something at the same time. Oh, I was just uh, say again that in Hosea four six it says, mm. "My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge." Knowledge mm. of Christ brings peace, and it's the Christ in us, which is just what Tommy was saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the flip it's side of the common. coin. That's that's the right. flip of the coin of uh Second Peter chapter one. Yeah. Right? You know, with the right knowledge we we have everything, and with without it, it's death. Right? Right. Yeah, and that's that's uh that's you know, we uh, so much to glean and that like you didn't say what Tommy was saying and, and what we been saying is that hallelujah. You know, the love of God, we get to walk in, in him. So walk in him, right? You know, wow, we, we get to do that. That wasn't a choice for Old Testament saints. Right. And they would be doing backflips. You know, we talked last time that, you know, Jesus mentioned, he said that, you know, uh, that no one born a woman was greater than John the Baptist. You know, but least is he who is born in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. But so we've been programmed to think that we're lesser than John the Baptist. When Jesus would tell you differently. That's what I love. And just a quick sidebar, what have you, uh, you know, on it. Uh, the church as a whole has a hard time telling people about the Lord. They always want to be politically correct. I don't want to say always. I don't want to run a, a cloth across it or what have you. But they, you know, want to be nice, want to make friends, want to take them to coffee, want to buy them dinner, want to mow their grass. You know, uh, all these things before they get down to the urgency of the message. And you know. Uh, I'll never forget, and I need to be back in practice, you know, on this more. But we, you know, and some of you seen the YouTubes on it, but you know, going, we took a trip to Galveston, and man, we stopped at the gas station, and I would talk to people, and I would say, "Hey, you know, are you a Christian?" And they said, "Well, yeah, you know, I'm a, you know, whatever denomination they were." And I said, "No, no, no, no." I said, "That's that's not my question." I said, "My question is, who is Jesus to you?" And they would come back and they would say, you know, a lot of them, you know, he's my Lord and Savior, some of them different, you know, that kind of thing. And, but it was my opportunity to come in and say, this is his words, what Jesus says, whoever believes in him has everlasting life. Amen. You know, what Jesus says. And we were down in Galveston and uh, run across this girl. She'd been working in the gift shop for three or four years. She was a student from uh, Turkey. And uh, my youngest and I were in there. She was looking at swimsuits and I was just kind of, she was young. So I was just kind of standing around, you know, being sure nobody bothered my daughter. And this young Turkish voice behind me says, hey, may I help you? And there was this green-eyed Turkish girl, 23 years old, that uh, she was right there. And so I just started talking to her, brief talk about what she's doing there, why is she in, you know, there in Galveston. And we talked about the water in Turkey on the ocean versus the water here and all that. I asked her how long she'd been there. And she said she'd been there, I can't remember, three or four years. I said, oh, you must be a Christian then. And she says, no, she says, I am Muslim. I said, oh, well, that's fantastic. 
I said, well, you've heard of Jesus Christ then, right? And she said, yes. And I said, well, Jesus says whoever believes in him has everlasting life. And her eyes vibrated left to right with the power of the message hitting her. And I spoke to her a little more. And then anyway, some, some, some plant seeds, some water, that kind of thing. But uh, ended up uh, visiting, finishing that day, went back the next day. And I went and got her a red letter edition, Tyndale New Living Translation Bible. And I went back to that store and I couldn't find her. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. I should have went yesterday. I should have did this yesterday. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Anyway, she walked up and I talked to her and, uh, uh, you know, I had told her, I, I handed it, you know, I was talking to her and I asked her if she'd ever, ever read. No, oh, this is the day before I asked her if she'd ever read the gospel of John. And she says, no. She said, but maybe before I read your book, I should read my book. And I said, well, your book said that you're to adhere to the teachings of Jesus, right? And she goes, yeah, that's that's right. So the next day I show up with that red letter Tyndale edition and and I hand it to her and I show her all the red letter. Of course, I got verses highlighted and everything in there by that time. And I hand it to her and I said, you know, I give it to her and show her the gospel of John and the, the red letters. And she goes, what is this? What is this? What is this? I said, it's a gift. Take it. And she almost cried. She says, oh, I will read it. And, you know, the power of the message hitting people. You know, we, you know, to just tell people that Jesus says, whoever believes in me has eternal, whoever believes in him has eternal life, you know, has everlasting life, you know, and put it out there. It's a powerful, powerful message. And then we went to back to the hotel and we were leaving and the same thing happened with the girl from, I think it was India. She was a Sikh. I did the same thing. Well, Jesus says, Whoever believes in him has everlasting life. And the eyes did the same thing. But the problem is most Christians don't want to tell the message. Some plant, some water, some harvest. Plant the message. Amen. 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 It's important. It's important. So, hallelujah, class. I, I guess class is over. Does anybody have anything they want to add before we stop recording? Yeah, I want to say that um, even in the when uh, Jesus is teaching his disciples on how to pray that our Father, um, mm -hmm. if you continue to say is that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, <clears throat> it's already been done. You know, we have the power and authority, and that's why it says on earth as it is in heaven. So, it, that's right. it backs up, you know how we have the authority now, you know, through Jesus Christ shedding his blood and, you know, and all that good stuff. So I just want to put that out there. Well, yeah, good word, brother. That's, that's exactly right. And, and we've been, we, you know, all authority has been, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus has passed that to us, all that authority. And so let's use it. You know, wouldn't that be something to, to get up before God and say, man, I use every bit of the authority I had and 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 it'd be right <laughs> you know what I'm saying that would be that would be an amazing thing you know what I'm saying uh praise God but there's a lot of people a lot of people are talking about end times a lot of people are talking about asteroids coming within a hundred miles of the earth lots of people are talking my question would be okay if times are near who are you getting saved healed and delivered Who do you care? Do, 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 do you care about anybody else? Because it's a life and death message. It is. Life or death message. Amen. So get it out. Get it out there. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that, Miguel. Anybody else?
All right. I guess we're done with the lesson. That was lesson six of the Believer's Authority and Andrew Walmart study, uh, what you didn't learn in church. And so thanks for joining us. And uh, we're about to go to the after class. And so God bless you. Hope it's rich as you catch the YouTubes on the other one. Thank you much.